Hello crafty friends and welcome to today's Stamping September video. Today I'm going to do a bit of repeat stamping but with a little bit of something extra thrown in. So I've got my stamp position here. This is a piece of mixed media paper because I'm going to be adding some water and I want the colours that I add and the water to mix and mingle and spread around nicely. And I've got three scribbly circle stamps and I've put them at the bottom of this bit of card so that I can pull the card down and repeat stamp all the way up. So I'll pick up my stamps, take some ink. This is chipped sapphire distress oxide, which is a lovely indigo color, a purpley blue. And I'm going to stamp that there. Might do that a couple of times. I'm going to clean that off and shuffle my card down maybe hmm, two and a half centimetres. Let's have a look. So there's a bit of overlap, maybe three, I think, three centimetres. So now I'm going to use faded jeans, which is a lovely muted blue. So I'm creating a column of these circles. I'll pull that down another three, clean those off. I do apologise if you can hear the background noise today. There seems to be some kind of work going on, as always seems to be the case around here at the moment. So this is shaded lilac, which is a lilac colour, unsurprisingly. Now another three centimetres. And I'm going to go back in with the chipped sapphire. You don't have to drag it down the same amount each time. You can drag it down different amounts so you get a less repeating overlap, which is what I've done inadvertently, but that's okay. Right, I do want to get a bit of shaded lilac on the bottom here, just so we've got the two colors. Right, I'm happy with that. There's a bit of variation going on, but also some regularity and some repeats. But what I've got here is a teeny tiny little open circle and I'm going to stamp that randomly just to bring in some more variation and keeping similar colours together. So I'll do all the shaded lilacs here like this. And it's just to sort of fill in some gaps. And now the faded jeans. Now some chip sapphire, just the last colour. And now for the watery part, I'm going to make up some shimmery water using Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder and White Pearl Mixer. And I'll just add some water to that, some nice clean water, like this. Get it fairly dilute because what I want to do is spat it on here to add some shimmer. But what's hopefully going to happen as well is that the shimmery splatters will pick up some of the colour from the inks. I'll just pick up some of these spatters that have ended up a bit too far over into my white space. And I'm also going to take some clean water without any shimmer and spatter that on top and that again will pick up some of the colour from the ink so it spreads out a bit and now I'm going to leave that to dry naturally if I dry it now then the colours will stay as they are now but if I leave it to dry some of that ink will mingle with the water and the cosmic shimmery water and we should get a more profound effect Right, I'll be back in a bit. Right, this has dried nicely now. And I hope you can see all the kind of splotchy, blotchy areas that splattering on the shimmer powder 
and the water created. I really like that. So I've stuck this on a card blank. It is now four by five and a half ish inches. And I think it's time to add a die cut and a sentiment to finish it off. For a die cut, I've used this feather die to die cut out some gold glitter cardstock. And I've stuck vellum on the back and trimmed around it with my scissors. So now that is translucent as well as gold and glittery. And I decided to go translucent, partially see-through, because I didn't want to cover up too much of this background here. But we also need a sentiment. So I've got some mixed media paper here in my stamp positioner, because I want the sentiment strip to match the panel on the card. And I've got a silicone stamp here that I'm just keying the surface of with a sand eraser. That helps the ink to stick to it because I want to use the chipped sapphire. And these distress oxides are water-based. And silicone stamps don't really like water-based inks. But if you key the surface a little bit, you do get a better inking. So that looks like a good start. I'm just going to do that a few times to get a solid impression. One more time should do it, I think. And I've got a stitched rectangle die that I'm going to use to die cut this. I'll get it lined up and hold it in place with some washi. And this is obviously a little bit long, so I'm going to line it up, hold it in place, and then just die cut the end there. Right, so there's my feather and my thinking of you. So I'm thinking something like that. I'm going to turn my feather into a sticker using my Xyron sticker maker. That will cover the whole of the back of the feather, the vellum, with sticky so it won't show through. So we'll pop it about there. This can go, let's have a think. I was thinking there, does it cover up too much of the feather? I don't think so, I think that's fine. But I do want a little bit of card at either end to keep everything level. And I'll just use a tiny little bit of this gold glitter because I know that's the same thickness as the feather. Give or take a bit of vellum. So I'll glue a little bit at this end and some more at this end. Add some glue across the whole thing and pop it across there. And now I've got my little pot of circles here. I've got some gold glittery ones that I previously die cut. And I'm gonna add some of these from the top to the bottom just to spread the gold out a bit. I'll get a big one here and I'm gonna snip that in half. So I can add half at the top and half at the bottom. And I think that will do. I'm really happy with that. I love the stamp and splotch. Let's call it the stamp and splotch technique. So you stamp it, you drip some water or some shimmery water on and leave it to splotch. I think it makes for a really interesting background. And I like the gold glitter against the dark blues and the lilac. Right, I think that'll do then. Thank you for watching. I hope this has given you some ideas of things you can do with any kind of stamps that you have in your stash. Don't have to be circles, could be hearts, stars, whatever you fancy. If you have gleaned any ideas or tips, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for another Stamping September video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.